Carl Fisher has studied leadership and communication for 30 years, earning his Bachelor's of Arts in, in Rhetoric at UC Berkeley, Master's, Master of Divinity in Urban Ministry from Trinity Evangel Evangelical Divinity School in Deerfield, Illinois, and an MBA from the University of San Francisco. Brian authored the article, How to Motivate Employees in Tough Financial Times, for Supervision Magazine in 2002. And he has delivered motivational speeches and training seminars for churches and corporations from coast to coast. Mr. Fisher has been a Toastmaster for nearly two years with AAA Talkers in Walnut Creek, where he currently serves as president. Communication happens in the context of a relationship, says Brian, and the key to motivating people is for them to know, how, know you care about them and their success. His motto is, when you are successful, I am successful. Today, Brian is going to share the story of how his home club, AAA Talkers, went from needing district help to becoming a distinguished club through the empowerment of relational motivation. Please join me in welcoming, to, in welcoming our Toastmaster, uh, Brian Fisher. Thank you, Stephanie. I wanted to start out with an activity, because I know you have, does anyone feel like they've just taken a drink from the fire hydrant? Anybody feel like that? <laughs> I mean, sometimes you feel so overwhelmed. I remember at Training the Trainers a couple of weeks ago, they said, you know, why is it that people don't like to eat elephants? Anybody? <laughs> because they really want to pig out. That's why. <laughs> no, I, I tell my son, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? And I know that's a lot of information today. I want to bring it back home to the heart of the matter. Because we talk a lot about talking. What I want to talk about is listening. I want to talk about building relationships with people. So to do that, I would like each of you to look to the person on your right. Okay, specifically look at their forehead, and then now look at the person on your left, if there's a person on your left, look at their forehead. Okay, now look at me. If you didn't have anyone on your right or left, look at me. Did you see four letters on their forehead? They were M-M-F-I. Did you see that? Look again. Look again. You see M-M-F-I on their forehead? M-M-F-I, everyone has that on their forehead, and it stands for Make Me Feel Important. <laughs> Make Me Feel Important. Everyone wants to feel important. And if you hear nothing else in all I'm going to share with you today, as a leader, we have the opportunity to make people feel important. And when they do, they reciprocate in kind, and they become involved. You ever heard of the book, Everything I Learned I Learned in Kindergarten? Anybody? Everything I Learned? Well, I guess I'm a late bloomer because everything I learned, I learned in first grade. <laughs> Back in 1968, I was six years old. I'll do the math for you. I'm 54. I'm going to be 55 in April. And here I am at home in elementary school in Fresno, California. At I, I can really relate with you, Jim, when you're talking about being five years old and you already got a vision for what you wanted to do. I had a different experience at six years old. Yeah, my parents were just divorced, and I had a lot of health problems. I had I just contracted asthma, and I don't know if it was because of the drama that was going on in my life. Um, I got a severe earache in my left ear, and they, they called it, you broke your eardrum. I still can't hear very well in my left ear, so I always talk to, my, uh, to our people, our partners at uh, AAA. And I, I say, what? And they have to repeat it. But I was going through a lot of drama in my life. And by the time I was in first grade, we had to move, my sister, my mother, and I, we moved out of our house because of the divorce in with our, my maternal grandparents. And so every couple of years, we were moving a lot. And as a result, I never really, really learned my ABCs. I was in first grade, and I was like the only one in the class who didn't know his ABCs. I remember asking my grandpa one time, I was in the dining room with all these alphabet cards, and I was trying to organize them, and I said, Grandpa, how do you spell cat? And he said, Brian, 
Look it up in the dictionary. How am I gonna? I don't know how to spell. <laughs> I later all uh, later thought about that, and I realized that you know what? He only had like a ninth grade education, or not even that. And he might not have known how to spell. So I gotta give him a little, <laughs> little break there. But anyway, one of the things. So I missed a lot of school. I missed a lot of school, and I didn't know my ABCs. And as a result, I was in the lowest reading group in the first grade, if you call it that. I mean, I didn't even know the ABC, so I don't know if you call it a reading group or not. But this was, does anybody remember the first project you had in first grade where you put plant a bean and then it grows into something? That, that's me right there in April. I was uh, just turning seven in 1969. And that was my little project, so I could bring it home, and even though I didn't make class, I could still grow it. Mm -hmm. But my teacher, Miss Rosen, she contacted me afterwards, saw that I was struggling with reading, maybe because she understood I was going through a lot of trauma in my life. And she said, Brian, I want to invite you after school. And she, I don't know if you can do this these days, but she sat me on her lap. <laughs> and she opened the book up and she held my little finger and helped me trace over the letters. C. A, T, K, A, T, D, A, G. Good, Ryan. And after a couple of months and two times a week coming after school with Miss Rosen, she taught me how to read. Some people graduate high school and still don't know how to read. And I was given, you know, they say that it's darkest right before the dawn. Yes. And you need to go through some difficult experiences to get some good experiences. I was fortunate at a young age to have some really good mentors and really good leaders in my life. But that's what Miss Rosen did for me. She taught me how to read. I'll tell you the rest of the story at the end. But here's something that Miss Rosen understood. If you get nothing like I said in this story, I want you to get the value of building relationships with the people you work with. I want to call them not the people that work for you, but purpose partners, purpose partners. So there are three things I want to cover today. Number one, there's truth, which is understanding others. By the way, would you do me a favor and take out a piece of paper and write some notes? Because I have 30 years of thinking about leadership and education to try to cram into 20 minutes. And I'm going to throw out some really great nuggets, but I don't want you to miss them, OK? So there's truth. Understanding others. And that's what Miss Rosen did. She built a relationship with me so I could understand. You remember the Charlie Brown teacher? Wah, 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 wah. Well, that's how Miss Rosen would have been to me if she didn't build a relationship. Because you know what? Communication happens in the context of a relationship. Let me say that one more time so you can write it. Communication happens in the context of a relationship. Do you believe it? You can go up to someone walking down the street and say, go jump in the lake and they're ready to fight you. Because you have no relationship with that person. They don't know the context. But I can just look at my wife of 31 years and nod and she'll know what I mean. Because we have a relationship. It's not so much about the words. It's about that relationship. Another thing is people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Relationships, that's the foundation. We talked about that in retention in the membership club. In the membership class, we had uh, retention. Tyree and Michelle were leading us, and that was the first thing they put on their thing. You need to have a relationship. If you want to know how to retain people and how to grow, grow your club, you need a relationship. But I'm going to tell you our story. So the first thing is you need to understand others. How do you understand others? You build a relationship. Second thing. From truth comes wisdom. What's wisdom? It's applied truth. It, it doesn't, I don't care what you know. <laughs> if you don't apply it, it's as if you don't know it. So wisdom is applied, applied truth. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about our AAA talker story and how we were able to create a culture and an atmosphere where people could be understood and build that relationship and they would group. And finally, from truth and wisdom comes excellence. The result is excellence, creating and maintaining. 
Are y'all ready to begin? Let's go.